Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and this beast right here is Acer's mighty new Triton 500 2020 edition. Specifically the Predator Triton 500 PT 515 52730D if you want to get all pedantic about it. This all new Triton 500 gaming laptop will cost you a tasty two and a half grand if you fancy it with all of those bells and whistles including an RTX 2080 Super GPU and that gorgeous 300Hz display. So you better get saving now or maybe Maybe just grab some pliers and get to work on Grand's gold teeth. So I've been thoroughly testing out the Predator Triton 500 2020 edition this week. It's a really, really tough life. And here is my in-depth review for all you need to know. And for more on the latest greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So with all the gaming laptops I've reviewed so far in 2020, definitely still seeing a continuation of that trend away from the insane laptop design. It seemed like about a decade ago, every single gaming laptop that came out had it resemble some sort of HR Geiger nightmare. But the Acer Triton 500 is definitely fairly subtle beyond some little touch of flair here and there, such as these slope and lid corners, and of course the obligatory light up lid logo. Of course, Acer still can't resist going over the top in a few areas, and when you start up the Predator Triton 500, it certainly makes its presence felt. Definitely very handy if your aim is to scare the living shit out of anyone else who happens to be in the same room as you, or possibly even the same household. And this model apparently features a colour called Abyssal Black, uh, which I originally misread as Abysmal Black. Is it abysmal? Well, that seems a little bit harsh, but it's certainly black. But is it as black as an abyss? Well, it definitely feels like I've spent a lot of time staring into one of those quite recently, and to be honest, this doesn't seem quite that black. I've certainly got no qualms at all with the construction here, though. The Triton 500 weighs just 2.1 kilos, nice and light, and it measures just 18 millimeters when closed up as well, so it's pretty portable as far as super-powered gaming laptops go. You'll still need a decent-sized backpack in order to lug it around, but certainly no worse than any other 15-inch gaming laptops out there. And the laptop certainly seems to be reasonably rugged as well. Those dual hinges are nice and stiff and also seem like they could put up with a fair bit of punishment while giving you a full 180 degrees of freedom. Well, the rest of the chassis, including that lid, are basically as tough as old beef. And you get a perfectly respectable selection of ports on here as well. You get a single USB-C Thunderbolt, you get three USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, an HDMI 2.0 port, a mini display port, and of course an Ethernet port. And there's a good amount of storage in this thing as well with a full one terabyte SSD shunted away inside. And it's a nippy wee blighter as well. My Crystal Mark tests return read and write speeds well over three gigabits per second. Great stuff. And that keyboard on the whole is very agreeable as well, although not quite perfect. I love the firm key action and the way that each key springs instantly back into place as soon as it's been struck. Definitely no sticking or any issues like that. It feels like a premium board through and through. And as usual, of course, there's a general slathering of full-on RGB backlighting and you can individually customize each key's color using the Acer Predator Sense app, which which can be called up with a quick tap of this dedicated key right here on the right side of the board. Over there you'll also find some media controls, although there is no number pad action. The arrow keys do feel a wee bit squidged in, they're not set apart from the rest of the board, while Acer has also committed the cardinal sin of the single row enter key. Gugh. But apart from that, it's basically a thumbs up. Oh, and the touchpad, if anyone actually cares, is all right. It supports usual multi-swipe gestures and all that shenanigans, but it doesn't really like left clicking. And frankly, I just hook up a mouse straight away. Now, one of the very first highlights of the Predator Triton 500 2020 edition, which definitely helps to elevate it over rivals, is that 15.6 inch IPS display. It is only a full HD panel, sadly, so you will have to get hooked to a proper Ultra HD monitor if you want to truly take advantage of this laptop's graphical prowess. But I was happy enough gaming on that built-in screen, mostly thanks to the next-gen 300Hz refresh rate. Yeah, that's right, a full-on 300Hz. And that may seem like overkill, and it certainly is for me personally with my alcohol and time-weathered reaction speeds. But if you're absolutely dead serious about having that slight competitive edge, especially if you want to get into the likes of eSports, then it'll do the job. And certainly those fast-paced action games like Doom run with awesome fluidity. It's like a beautiful ballet of blood and dismembered limbs flying through the air with a stunning smoothness. Contrast levels are good as well, and colour accuracy is also among the best. In my Spider-X Pro tests, the Acer Predator Triton 500 reproduced the full sRGB gamut and covered 76% of that Adobe RGB. You'll definitely want to stick to indoors gaming though, or definitely find yourself some serious shade. The Predator Triton 500 screen tops off at around 350 nits. Not the worst round by any means, but certainly I did struggle once it started to get a little bit brighter outdoors, and the anti-reflective coating on that display isn't the most anti-reflective 
product and I've certainly tested. The audio chops are really strong as well. You get full DTSX Ultra support and you'll definitely want to get a proper surround sound headset on the go to really take advantage. The actual built-in speakers are shunted away underneath the Predator Triton 500 chassis and their sound is therefore a little bit muffled. It's absolutely fine for watching a video or something thanks to the high top volume but when you're gaming you'll definitely want to get a headset on the go to get that proper surround sound action. And now on to the second of the Predator Triton 500's highlights and that is the performance. What you get here is a 10th gen Intel Core 8 series chipset, specifically the Intel Core i7 10875H. Now just a quick heads up, my review model came with 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM stuffed inside. It seems like the standard UK models however only come with 16 gigs, half the amount, but you should still expect nice smooth performance. As usual, Ace's Predator Sense app is on board to tweak the performance settings and monitor your rig. I've banged on about it plenty in the past, but the best bit is definitely the ability to crank up the performance and overclock that GPU nice and quick. And if you happen to like benchmarks in the same way that I like a nice large glass of chilled whiskey, then great news, that's exactly what's going to be coming at your face. So with the performance bumped up to those maximum levels, PC Mark 10 spat out a score of 6,749, and meanwhile Cinebench 10 offered up a score of 3,254. So definitely that 10th gen Intel chipset thrown its weight around and producing some really solid results. But of course for blasting through all of the latest PC games with the ultra graphics settings enabled, you'll need a sh hot GPU and the Predator Triton 500 certainly does not disappoint on that front. What you get stuffed in there is NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 2080 Super. I ran a tasty bit of 3D mark with the performance chops once again cranked up to the max and unsurprisingly the results were really rather good. Time Spy spaffed out an almighty score of 8,949. Meanwhile, Port Royal, which specifically measures the real-time ray tracing chops, also impressed with a score of 5,303. And the Triton 500 2020 also blazed through Fire Strike Extreme with a result of 10,116. And I also decided to put the Predator through its paces with a bit of strange brigade benchmarking as well. And on the default graphics settings, the average frame rate was 210, quite often pushing up towards those high 200s, and apparently at one point even breaking 400 frames per second. And meanwhile, on the ultra settings, it averaged at 147 FPS, a mightily impressive effort. So it's good to see that the Triton 500 is actually capable of churning out 300 frames per second to make the most of that 300Hz display. And of course I actually played some games as well on the Triton 500 for hours and hours to put it through absolute hell. And thankfully even with the GPU overclocking turned on I had no issues with heat buildup. Ace's 4th generation Aeroblade fans are stuffed inside this metal chassis along with 5 heat pipes in total to help keep the Triton 500 cool under duress. And Ace personally reckons that these fans are 33% more effective at shifting all of that pesky hot air out of the laptop compared with the 2019 model of Triton 500. And I was certainly impressed as well because after half an hour of frantic doom action with those detail levels maxed out and the overclocking active, the CPU temperature stabilised at around 85 degrees centigrade and the GPU temperature hovered around those low 70s and they stayed that way well past the hour mark and beyond. And thankfully all of that hot air is effectively pushed away from you as well. At no point did the keyboard get toasty and I didn't feel any heat creeping in around the edges or anything like that either. And sure those fans do get pretty noisy at times but considering all the effort they're putting in they're really not too bad at all. And even in a long intense gaming session the GPU usage rarely crept above 70% while the CPU usage hovered around 30%. And if you fancy murdering your stupid so-called friends or just random strangers online. No issues with the connectivity whatsoever. Of course got that Ethernet support and full Wi-Fi 6 support as well. I just stuck to the wireless connection and I found that was absolutely fine. No stutters or stammers at all. Of course the battery life is completely dreadful. Not too surprising given the juice sucking internals in this thing. You'll get just over an hour of skull blast and fun times before a full battery is completely drained and as usual you can't make use of the performance boosting features like that overclocking mode while you're away from the mains. And don't expect to get much longer battery life than that if you're simply browsing a bit of the web or doing some Netflix or something like that because once again the Predator Triton 500 snuffed it in about an hour and 40 minutes from a full charge. So that right there is my full Ace of Predator Triton 500 2020 review and if you're after a super powered machine with a 300 hertz display you definitely can't really go far wrong because you've got to have a bit of cash in the bank because this thing ain't cheap but I definitely think it's worth it. Now are you tempted by the Ace of Predator Triton 500? Definitely be great to your thoughts down in the comments below or if you've been using it yourself as well, your own personal experiences, be great to hear from you. And please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. Cheers everyone, love you.